Where does the money go from tourism in Jamaica? Ever wondered? Well, in this episode, I would like to answer this question and share as an example the story of the new face of Montego Bay. The story of Harmony Beach Park. Montego Bay is the capital of tourism in Jamaica, located in a beautiful harbor with some stunning views. But for many years, there was nowhere to walk by the seafront. This fact was quite shocking to all the tourists who came to Montego Bay, and it was even more inconvenient for the locals, who had no proper open public space for their families to enjoy. All of it changed in 2021, despite the crash of tourism industry due to the pandemic, despite the problems with financing because of that, despite COVID restrictions. To everyone's surprise, a brand new project was completed and open to the public. Beach Park is the new waterfront area that was officially opened to the public on the 21st of May 2021. The park is 16 acres and it is the first public space in Jamaica to include a beach as a part of the property. The entrance is free for all, but there are CCTV cameras, foot patrols and lifeguards to ensure safety and security of the visitors. The cost of the park project was 1.3 billion Jamaican dollars, which is around 10 million US dollars. But was it even worth it? The name Harmony Beach Park was chosen by the locals after a Name the Park competition that was held among the public. As you enter the park, you will be met by the staff who follow all the protocols, which were implemented due to COVID. Beautiful entrance leads you right to the beach with benches and young trees planted along its sides, which would become only better once the trees grow older. If you are coming with a car, there are two areas available with 132 parking spaces in total. The park and the beach have no admission fee, but the parking costs 200 Jamaican dollars per hour or 700 per day. Now, of course, the park has all the essential facilities such as restrooms, changing rooms and showers, as well as lockers, which makes it very convenient for everyone who wants to use public beach. One of my favorite zones is the promenade along the beach with a few tables, a lot of benches and a couple of gazebos. Finally, it is possible to walk along the seafront and enjoy the gorgeous views that Montego Bay coastlines got to offer. The park currently opens at 6 a.m. every day, which makes it perfect for someone who wants to do exercises. What's your name? My name is Floyd. The Harmony Park now, what do you think about it? It is beautiful. Couldn't have so better. My name is Mark Fisher. I've been exercising since a little after six this morning. Okay, how is it? Do you like it? Yes, well, it was well deserved. I know it's well received, yes. Okay. We like, we, we, we like the park. Oh, have you been jogging or what kind of exercise? Yeah, we have been jogging. We did a couple laps around the park. Mm -hmm. and we came and we did some, some um, squats and some push-ups and mm -hmm. you know, all of those um, high-intensity training workouts. Okay, and all these ladies are with you all as well? Our team. This yes, is all this is great team. Teams, yeah. yeah, this, this is, is our team. team. Okay, this okay. This lovely lady over here, Judith. Judith, be a part of our team. <laughs> Hello. Hello, ladies. Hi. Uh, how was the exercise here in the park now? It was good. It was good. Yeah, awesome job. We should get back in the park going. Okay, are you coming back again the yeah, next I'm, day? We don't mind. We come, we come every day because it's lovely. Oh, fantastic. Do you live in Montego Bay? Yeah, close by. Close by? Yeah. What do you think, ladies? It's, Do, it's lovely. It's yeah. beautiful. All right, fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you. All Thank right. you, guys. All right, you have a beautiful morning. All right, bye bye.
There is a jogging trail and I must mention that the type of surface they chose doesn't only look good but it also feels good when running. There is also a multi-purpose court that will be available to everyone once the pandemic is over. The same can be said about the two playgrounds that were designed to accommodate families with small children. They will be open as soon as protocols allow, but as you can see, they are ready to be launched any moment. There are several spaces that are available for businesses to rent. The applications with proposals have already been submitted in the beginning of June and hopefully we will see a few shops and cafes opening in the nearest time. But now let's see why this park is way more special for Jamaica than it might seem at a first glance. The area where the park is located was previously known as Closed Harbour Beach, or more commonly referred to as Dump Up Beach. If you wonder what the area looked like in the past, well, far in the past, that area didn't even exist. It was only when Jamaica became independent, a large development took place of reclaiming the land from the sea by dumping sand and rock into the water. Hence the name, Dump Up Beach. And yes, it's an artificially created beach. Because of that work, Montego Bay waterfront area was significantly increased and the newly created land became the property of the government. But what exactly had to be done with this land to make the most of it? The first time I heard of the plan to create the park was in 2017 during one of the breakfast forums in Montego Bay. The project was presented by UDC, which stands for Urban Development Corporation. They showed the slide shots of the area and even had a 3D model of the proposed park ready. At that time, some people mentioned that the whole project seemed quite unrealistic, since various plans of development of the area had been in place since 1970s, but it's just that they were mostly on paper. So those people were kind of skeptical that anything would actually be done. But as we know, this time it was different. And of course now people are trying to push the political aspect of it because it was one of the projects made by Jamaican government. Those who support the current government go, see, this party is doing a great job. And those who don't support them go like, see, they're reaping the fruits of the work of the previous government. But of course the reality is way more interesting than that. <laughs> Jamaica has been rapidly changing in the last 20 years. It's obvious to anyone who pays attention to this crazy growth of infrastructure. And for those who are not aware of what's happening, here are just a few examples. One of the main factors that keeps contributing to these changes is the new act about funding that was passed by the parliament in December 2004 and established an organization known as Tourism Enhancement Fund. Hello, hi. Let me introduce you to Dr. Kerry Wallace, who kindly agreed to answer a few questions about the exciting subject of money and funding in an exclusive interview to our YouTube channel. Thank you for joining. My pleasure. Glad to have you. According to the official website, the primary funding partner for Harmony Beach Park is Tourism Enhancement Fund. And to be honest, any attentive person would see this logo all over Jamaica. So what is Tourism Enhancement Fund? So we are an agency in the Ministry of Tourism with the responsibility of enhancing Destination Jamaica. So each year we invest uh, funds into the development of our infrastructure, development of our beaches or parks or, or roads leading to attractions, so all that's needed to make our tourism product here in Jamaica that much better each year. And, that, and that's our job. So in simple words, it's a, like a government organization that takes money that Jamaica earns from tourism and invests it into Jamaica? or Pretty much. We, uh, when we were formed, our act was designed that way where we, we could actually ch uh, charge a fee 
to every passenger coming into Jamaica. So airline passengers would pay $20 and cruise passengers would pay $2. When I was looking through the list of projects that are fully or partially financed by TEF, I noticed that some of them were indeed directed at tourism, like Montego Bay welcome sign that was recently built. Yeah. But I noticed there are some projects that are not related to tourism whatsoever, like the Negril Fire Station or Osherov's Post Office. So why does Tourism Enhancement Fund invest money into projects that are not related to tourism? Well, it's hard to say what is not related to tourism. If you think about uh, the appeal of a resort town in general, the, I mean, safety and security, let's take the fire station in a resort town impacts tourism. I mean, who wants to travel to a, a destination where they're at risk should they, there be a fire or should they get sick? Or, or so, so we consider all those factors in what makes a resort town a, a, an outstanding one and a safe one. And a, we approach our projects like that to make sure that um, all the amenities are available in the resort towns. And, and beyond. I mean, mm -hmm. we have to consider that uh, the entire Jamaica is a destination. And so we look at the merit of each project when it comes to our board to see how it can have a, a huge impact, good value for money in, uh, in developing Jamaica as a destination. I saw some comments in the internet um, after grand opening of Harmony Beach Park. Let me quote one, Mark. A good use of taxpayers' money. Finally, the taxes Jamaicans pay give them a good park to use in return. However, if I understand it right, this particular funding comes from taxes tourists pay, not from taxes Jamaicans pay. Well, okay, so we collect the cruise and airline fees on behalf of central government, the TEF, and that then goes into the pool of pub the public's funds, which includes other taxes that come directly from the locals. Mm -hmm. So in general, it's the public's funds. And we operate with that in the back of our minds, that we, are, we have to be prudent in the way we spend the public's funds and we have to ensure there's return on investment. Our return on investment really is the improvement of destination Jamaica to the point where our arrival numbers increase and so there are more passengers coming to Jamaica, so therefore they pay more fees. And that's how we have a, a, a return on our investment here at, mm -hmm. at the TEF. So, but in the end, though, the, the money that the tourists pay when they arrive, these are the kind of taxes, like the arrival tax is called, what, what do you call this? We call, it, it is called the TEF fees, and, and TEF it's, it's, it's itemized and it's on. it's included in the narrow Right, right exactly. Thing. Right, and then it goes to the, uh, like the pool in general. And until 2017, that was directly what was financing you. Exactly. It? it was coming straight to us, and we would have the accounts and so on. What we didn't use, we would have an investment accounts. But it, in the government's wisdom, they thought it was better, uh, better management and better cash flow if it mm -hmm. came into the console fund. And then for our annual budget, we then uh, send that into them for, um, for what we call warrants each month mm -hmm. of monies coming from the console fund for us to execute our projects. The lack of funds is usually one of the most important reasons why projects don't get completed. But of course, money would mean nothing without proper management and the actual construction work. The project was designed and is currently managed by a company I mentioned earlier, Urban Development Corporation. You might have never heard of UDC, but the chances are you have used their services, even if you're a tourist coming to Jamaica for just a few days. Now I'm showing you the footage of the world-famous attraction and Jamaica's national treasure, Duns River Falls. And if you're wondering how's that relevant, well, Duns River Falls are a project run by UDC. Green Grotto Caves and Reach Falls are two other examples of attractions that also belong to UDC. But the company doesn't just focus on tourist sites. UDC has a portfolio of all sorts of projects spanning different sectors and parishes, and you can see all of them on their website. So who are these UDC? In short, they are an agency of Jamaican government. They were established a long time ago in 1968, and their goal is to hold, manage and develop real estate on behalf of the government of Jamaica. 
But here is the thing that I found really unusual about them. Where I come from, government agencies are usually subsidized from the budget, so they don't make any money, they just spend it. Not exactly the case with UDC. They get investments from all sorts of sources, including their own projects. Basically, they operate more like a business rather than a government entity, which as a result makes it possible for them to take up much bigger projects and complete them much faster than if they were strictly relying on government funds. Harmony Beach Park is a good example because part of the funds was provided by the Inter-American Development Bank, which allowed the Tourist Enhancement Fund to give half of the total amount required. 600 million Jamaican dollars contributed by TEF uh, to this project. Why this project? Why not something else? Well, if you look at the kind of investment that we can make, usually it has to be a, a public entity. I mean, it's, it's hard for us to build out somebody's private business. We were just this is the government's funds. So, so we look at, at public development across Jamaica that would enhance tourism. So Montego Bay being the tourism capital city and having that uh, 16 acres of property that has a beach and has the area that the UDC had looked at the, the, the ultimate design of the, of, the, of the city and saw where that would be a huge positive impact on the city, providing the green spaces, providing the park, providing the running trails, providing the, the opportunities for locals and visitors alike to enjoy uh, you know, our great islands. So yes, there are all inclusives and so on who provide a lot of it inside the walls of all inclusives. But we are trying to encourage a lot more of our travelers to immerse themselves in a Jamaican experience. And as such, our roads outside these fancy hotels have to be just as on par. You know, our, our verges have to be on par or for, to give a, 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 an an opportunity for the entire Jamaica to be considered a great place for our visitors to, to choose to travel to. If it's such an important project, why didn't you provide full funding? Like, because the full cost of the project is 1.3 billion Jamaican dollars. Why did you only finance the, the part and then had to attract other investors? Uh, simply because we had other projects mm -hmm. in tourism that we had to you know, share the budget with. So it's such a huge budget that it would have carved out too much of what we have and we would then have to compromise on the other roles that we have to do across Jamaica, the other resort towns and so on. So TEF gets a certain approved budget each year. And for example, according to the annual report for years 2019 and 2020, it was 3.57 billion Jamaican dollars. So I That's found. right. Yes. yes. Uh, does that mean that all that budget is used for projects run by government or the entities that work with government? Or can anyone apply for these funds? Like, for instance, like I run an Airbnb, right? Can mm -hmm. I come? and say, well, can TEF give me some money, you know, for an extra room to put in? <laughs> I mean, come on, tourism enhancement. Right. <laughs> can that work? Uh, not, not really, unfortunately not. Um, so we have to invest in, in, uh, in projects that benefit, uh, uh, benefit the public. So one of the things that we're doing a lot of working in is, uh, is in our linkages programs. And the linkages program is to ensure that the consumption of all the visitors who come to Jamaica as much as possible, that consumption is supplied by our local goods and services. So the furniture that they sit and sleep on, we want that to be produced by our local Jamaicans. The food that they eat as much as possible, those uh, items to be provided by our farmers here, here in Jamaica. We facilitate the tourism entrepreneur. Uh, we want we understand that it's not just government persons that can move towards them forward, it's partnering with the stakeholders, with all the persons who are involved in the industry. And one of the things that we found was that they would want to have access to, to cheap financing, uh, subsidized financing. And so the TEF has provided that in two, in two ways. One is facility with the Jamaica National Small Business Loan, where a tourism, small or medium tourism enterprise could get up to 5 million Jamaican dollars, and the interest rate is 
Um, it's called a five by five by five program. Five million, five years, five percent. Well, that's nice. Yeah, so but people don't come to TA after apply for that. They, they go, go through the Jamaica National Small Business Zone. Right. So okay. we provide the funding to Jamaica to National, to the bank, and, and we give them the uh, instructions to say, we want to be at this interest rate we want. Mm -hmm. And who um, gets the interest rate, the bank or you do? So we get the interest rate, so it becomes a revolving fund. So as persons pay okay. that money in, then more is available in the pool for new beneficiaries. So it's like an investment from the TEF into the local businesses. Exactly. And then you're getting the interest on, on that, so you can actually invest more. Exactly. All exactly. right, so okay. And the other one? And we're doing something similar with the Exim Bank, mm -hmm. but that is a, is a bigger th uh, threshold. It's from 5 million to 25 million. Mm -hmm. And that's at 4.5%. You said about the returns on investment for TEF in the form of more tourists are coming to the country. But are you, like, with, with how many beach park, for example, are you going to get some of the money back? Or is all the money, because I know there are some business opportunities now uh, going to be available for people to rent places there. But... It, this money that's going to be earned with these business opportunities, is it going to go to TAF or UDC or somewhere else? Are you going to get your money back? So the, uh, the, the leases on these concessionaire um, units, will that, those lease payments will go to the UDC, who has a responsibility for the operations of the park. Mm -hmm. And that pretty much is, is how it will be, the revenues will be used. For the TEF, what we do is we invest in these capital, in, make these capital investments to invest in our infrastructure, to make it better, to make Jamaica a, a more appealing destination, a more attractive destination, and to get more visitors to decide that they're going to come to Jamaica. And as such, you know, we grow our numbers from 4.5 million to, to 5.5 million. And in, when, they, when that extra million comes in, they are paying the TEF fees at the airports, and that's how um, we, we view our return on investment. It is kind of a very long-term thinking. It is indirect and it's long-term, but in general, our mandate is to enhance Destination Jamaica, and we have that responsibility of making sure 10 years, time, 10 years from now, the destination we have here is 10 years improved. In 2019, the ground was broken for the historic game-changing moment for Montego Bay. The construction of Harmony Beach Park was carried out by a Jamaican company called M&M Jamaica Limited. I was surprised to learn that this company was started as a family-founded business in 1993 and is still run by the original owners, Donald Mullings and his wife, Winifred. According to the information in the press, now their family-owned business has become one of the nation's leading engineering, contracting and management companies. So no wonder they were the ones working on the park project. The development of Close Harbour is an important next step in really bringing new urban interventions to Montego Bay. We are very pleased to bring this together. Construction is underway, it's going well, and we look forward to delivering and opening this park in 2020. The construction began in May 2019, with a goal to be completed in 18 months, so that the park would be launched just before the peak of the tourism season in November 2020. And here is the celebration of the groundbreaking ceremony when people were still happy and completely unaware that the major event of the year 2020 was not going to be the grand opening of the park. This is an important notice concerning the pandemic coronavirus. The St. James Municipal Corporation urges everyone, especially the elderly, to protect themselves from the risk of coronavirus and other illnesses.
Jamaica is a country that is heavily dependent on tourism. Every single person who lives in Jamaica benefits from tourism in one way or the other, because the whole infrastructure, and I mean everything from the roads to the public hospitals, depend on government funding. And of course, a large portion of that money comes from tourism. I'm not even talking about direct funding, like the tax upon arrival, but imagine how much taxes various companies in tourism industry pay, like resorts when they fully operate, how many additional jobs they create, including the contractors for maintenance, or the farmers that bring fresh vegetables to hotels, and so on. I wish people could realize just the scale of the network that is built around tourism in Jamaica. But of course, in March 2020, all of it came to a stop. You've been exposed to COVID-19. Stay home. Self-isolate immediately and call 8881 Love. The financing of Harmony Beach Park was approved and, you know, the project was going just before COVID. And then, of course, lockdown, no money coming from tourism anymore. Yet the project continued. And I live in Mumbai, so I saw it and I was like, I can't believe that. They're still building. Yes. And I was like, how did Tourism Enhancement Fund manage to finance that challenging project at the most challenging time possible? Well, I think that's one of the benefits that we had from getting funding from the Consul Fund now, because I agree with you, our collections had dried up quite a bit and we were just handing over a fraction of what we used to hand over. We had perceived the industry as just going through a sabbatical. So we expected that the Minister of Health and the government would have uh, put the measures in place to overcome the pandemic. And, and we're seeing it happening as we speak. And we see tourism, our traveler resuming. So one of the things that we wanted to do to ensure that there wasn't too adverse an impact on Jamaica was to keep our activities and projects going that you could continue with protocols. Construction was a big one. And so we knew a lot of the hotels had to, had to close. A lot of people went home unemployed. Can you imagine if construction stopped too and those people had to go home unemployed? We'd have been in a, in a, in a, in a greater challenge than we have now. So keeping construction going, and when you, when you look at the PIOJ's reports, you see construction grew at, at double digits. So that's what we made a, a concerted decision to keep as many of the projects and programs and activities that could continue without compromising, without too much risks for, uh, for, for, for transmission of the, of the virus. Despite all difficulties and challenges, the construction of the park continued and it was finished by March 2021. Because of high risks of COVID cases at that time, the grand opening of the park was postponed for another few months. Finally, on the 21st of May 2021, Harmony Beach Park was open to the public. My name is Tamara Cooper. I came with my family to Harmony Beach for the first day and it's a wonderful beach. What do you like most about the park so far? Well, they have the shower. They, when I come off the beach, I can go and shower and they have the nice change room. They always clean the bathroom. So around here is really nice and spacious for kids and family to like run and stuff. So it's really nice. I'm from Montego Bay. So yeah, I live around here. I live around this area. <laughs> Hello, my name is Israel Bailey. I'm from a little district called Lottery. What I like so far is it's more secure, it's more safe, and it's more family enticing. As you can see, 
it's really full. Mm, as it's I true. would say, it's true. So many people today here. It's full because you know it's Sunday. But what don't you like about it? Hmm. But with the whole um um Corona pandemic, it it kind of cloak me up, as you could say. It, I have just locked up away and it just we don't really have anywhere to go more like that but now like the park is um, really re, um, re renovated it's it gives us a really a good place to come we can come and just enjoy ourselves with family you know just have a little time and keep the whole social distancing but it's a good it's a good look thank you so much have a fantastic day all right thanks Hi, my name is Richard Newman from Montego Bay, Jamaica. What do you think about this park? Is it the first time you're visiting? My first visit and it's a great improvement over what was here before. It has all the facilities and it's a fine addition to Montego Bay. Okay, so are you here today with your family or by yourself? Uh, my grandson. I'm here with my grandson. He's enjoying the water. I'm just watching. <laughs> okay, so you're not going for a swim? I'm not going in the water. Not today. Are you planning to come here more often? Sure. There's also a running track, I understand, and um, other things to do besides the beach, so I'll be back. I'm Sarah from Rose Heights. And what about you? I'm Kim from Green Pond. Is it the first time you come here after it was rebuilt? Yes, it's the first time. Uh -huh. What do you think about it? Is it good? Is it better than it used to be? It's okay. It's I, I appreciate the the bathrooms and the, the the water. I appreciate that and the seats. Okay, but what you don't like? I don't know. Probably it's my roots. Oh, tell me more. Well, um, I miss the openness and um, the capacity and the pandemic. It's not working out for me. Oh, it's because of the pandemic now. Do you think maybe it's gonna get better once the pandemic is over? Probably once it's open to everybody. Yeah. Some well, parts are still closed, is that what you mean? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. All right, what about you? What's your impression of the park? Well, I like it so far. It's my first time here since the renovation. I used to come here when I was a child, but I love it. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't change anything right now. Like, do you do swimming today here? Because they just opened the beach. Yes, I did. All right, what was the beach like? What's the swimming like now? It was great. I actually learned that I could swim today. Oh, fantastic. Did you teach her? Yes. Oh, you know how to swim? A little bit. Oh man, that's fantastic. That's, that's the way to do it. That's the way to do it. Definitely, I just said to her we should come more often on Sundays especially. I wanted to share the story of this project with you because it represents the tendency that is going on now with urban development in Jamaica, despite all the challenges. I'd like to encourage everyone traveling to Montego Bay to come and visit Harmony Beach Park. What do you think about this trend of urban development in Jamaica as a local or as a tourist? Please leave a comment down below and share this video with your friends. Thanks to everyone for watching and of course huge thanks to all the patrons, especially the official sponsors. If you also wish to become a part of the project, vote on upcoming topics and help us stay independent, you can do so from only 5 US dollars per month. And you can find the link to our Patreon page in the description below. My name is Irina and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now. See you guys, today I had to ask for some assistance from my husband. Oh man, I love Kingston so much. It's such a lovely city. Hello. Oh, you do? Hello. Go, hi. Do you want to go in the video? Uh, hello, what's your name? I'm Amisha. Oh, nice to meet you, Amisha. So, nice are you from Kingston? Yes, I am. So, you watch Jamaica with Ari? Yes, I do. And I love your, your blog. I love how you highlight Jamaica. Thank you. Know, you. The, the fact that you're not Jamaican and you're doing so much. Fantastic. Yes. I'm coming from an interview from a TAF, so that's going to be coming out soon on the video. Yes. 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 Yes.